These are the other things you're going to see me uh, put on my scooter um, or things that I carry into a job on a regular basis. So I'm going to start with this. Let me put these down. Okay. This is absolutely invaluable. I've dropped it on the floor, that's why it's all like this. Forget this stuff for now. As a breakdown engineer, you need one of these. You need it to, uh, for instance, undo the uh, inlet test point of a valent Nicotec gas valve. Okay, that's exactly what it's set up for right there, is a valent Nicotec gas valve um, for getting into the inlet test point. And straight away on my box, so that's what you need to uh, set a valent Nicotec gas valve. That's a formal Allen key on there. It's got a little extension. It makes it easier. You don't need don't need this. You can just use a four mil Allen key. But but you will need to put something in the bottom of this so the Allen key doesn't end up going in inside too much. So the Allen key doesn't end up going inside too much and being too short. But this little ratchet is phenomenal. It's absolutely fantastic. It's not part of this set, this is a Makita set. This ratchet is not the Makita ratchet. This now, a, a Regan sell this with Regan written on it. This is not a Regan ratchet. I don't even know how much the Regan ones cost, but I can guarantee you this one was a lot cheaper. So I bought these in bulk, I bought five. I actually gave two away. I lost one, I dropped it down the back of the unit and I have two left. Absolutely phenomenal. You need a bit set, everyone needs a bit set. Um, yes, it comes in very handy. I mean, the, the big torque bits and the big Allen key bits, if you work on valence, are handy. However, I'm gonna try and get rid of this. By the way, this is, if you ever see valent boilers that have the uh, funny little flue screws in, that's the bit you need. It's a seven mil, um, seven mil socket. Uh, and you can buy the screws. You have to search them out. I think I got them on screw from screw. I think I got them from Screw Fix, but that is the bit you need to fit them. Uh, and it makes like the self-cutting, self-tapping screws are absolutely brilliant for fitting to flues. So that's the bit you need. So I'm going to try and get this stuff in this tool roll now because I use it so often. I want it in this tool roll. Um, I've got to also say. Uh, because, I mean, North London's just full of valence and glowworms. So, here we go, look. Let's get over here, there you are. So part of my tool kit, there's the torque bit, which is a, can I see it on there? It's a T20. T20 torque bit for valent and glowworm boilers. You have to have that. Okay, you have to have a, a uh, posi 3 a normal posi or Phillips this I can't, this allen key here this is an allen key that is the one for removing uh, ISAR uh, electrodes so I don't know what size that is can't even remember but I just know that's the one so that goes in there that's the one I need so if you're looking at that's a pretty good idea of the sort of things you need to carry I mean this screwdriver is just set up like there's no point in having five uh, five Phillips, you know, you just need a couple. And only because you could probably drop one one day. Uh, okay, so let's get next bit. This one needs a bit of updating because I've used stuff out of it, but this is my safety. This is my little safety uh, pouch that I bring with me. This is air pressure switch tube. These are important. Uh, just the valve extenders, they're important for two reasons. Uh, you get one that's hard to reach, you can often put your hand down, screw one of these on one-handed, uh, and then get your pump on the end of it where you've got a bit more space to get it on and off. And also, if you haven't got the, um, you haven't got a Schrader valve core removal tool, um, which I, I do have, I do carry with me in the van, but not on the bike. 
on the bike actually saying that on the bike i have one for the bike for the scooter i have one that's uh, in the toolkit that's part of the scooter so in theory i do have one but if you didn't have one and the core was leaking you can screw this on nice and tight and it basically extends the uh it extends the core so it relies on that one so this is a quick fix uh if you need to because the straight of valves leaking on an expansion vessel you've got to carry two you've got to carry the bent and the straight generally speaking i just use these for getting on the uh trailer valve so, so for instance backsies um Baxi and main that's they some of them have it where um it's very awkward to get onto the expansion vessel so I mean, I mean, some of you guys probably actually remove the vessel to check it, to pump it up, whereas I would just remove that silly bracket that runs down the side of it and screw that on and get my get my pump on there. So they go like that. Gas tape, gas PTFE. Don't ever use this, except if I'm on the scooter because I don't carry paste. So, so let's see what I have in here. That's three eighth. That's three eighth. This is my safety stuff. And as you can see, I'm lacking. I've got, well, I haven't got 50 mil cap in there. So look, 22 mil cap, 15 mil cap now. Some meter discs. And we'll put all the rest of this, these meter discs in there. Uh, some grease. This has pellets. And matches because you never know when you're going to need them and if you're like me and you'd work on a scooter you need to know you've got them with you because it happens you turn up to a job to do something to a boiler and you know the, there's all soot marks above the fire well you got to deal with it so I don't smoke but I carry a lighter for simply lighting the pellets and matches and I'm lacking in this, so I need to get a 22mm nut and olive for that. I need to get a half inch. What is that? Half, that is half inch. I need to get a half inch uh, cap. I need to get, see, that's 3 eighths, isn't it? I need to get some quarter inch stuff as well. So this needs to have more stuff in it. I also usually carry a roll of PTFE in there as well. So. Okay, so next this is my analyzer bag. Now this used to be my analyzer bag when I was on the scooter. It's now become my normal analyzer bag. However, this handle is, the handle is completely knackered. So I need a new one of these. I'm actually gonna look for one of these. Oh, once I've got this video done and edited and uploaded, I'm gonna look for a new case for this. So in here, I'll show you the top bit first. Well, the top is very simple. I have a 10 mil T-bar for changing G10 seals on valence, because I'm in North London and see a lot of valence glow worms. I carry in this warning notices and labels. So I don't carry, you know, 50 warning notices. I carry five or six um, and that's it. This is taken out of my thing, this is an alpha thing. Um, I, I carry, I generally carry, uh, if I know I'm going to a certain boiler, I will carry the setup procedure for the gas valves and whatnot on it. Um, but let's, uh, let's show you, let me just sort something out here so I can see what you're seeing. So I have a Kane, four, Kane 455. Um, didn't used to like it. Okay, uh, I didn't used to like it, and then I done some contracting for British Gas, and they give you a Anton, and at first I absolutely loved the Anton, but then I found, uh, for me, now other people have told me exactly the opposite of this, for me, the Anton gets flooded too easily with CO. Uh, now, it was the Sprint 2 Evo, I think, that, uh, the Anton, is it Sprint 2 Evo, or Evo 2, I don't know. It was that was what we got, which is quite the the latest sort of one. Anyway, um, so I found they would get flooded with CO too easily, 
and so I'd get flooded with CO and it wouldn't be coming back down. I'd walk out to the van, get my 455 and set the boiler up. Quite simple. And right, for any of you that are up my way, I can, oh, they've taken the sticker off. Damn it, I could really recommend a company that are up here, but they're in Harlow. Oh, oh Joe you know what? They sell them dirt cheap. They look after them. Uh, they do a while you wait calibration service. Yes, while you wait. You pay an extra 20 quid, I think it is, and you can only do it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays or something. But you drive up, give your analyzer in, sit down and have a coffee, you know, mess about on YouTube, and, you know, 40 minutes later, they're calling you in because they've done it. Anyway, so carry that. A charger for that because the battery's always going flat. What's odd with these is to actually charge them, you plug it all into the wall and whatnot. And if this is off, you then turn it on and turn it off. And then it will say charging. If you just have it off and you plug it in and the red light comes on, it's not charging. It's trickle charging it. So it won't charge your batteries overnight. Yeah, so you'll feel like the things... I didn't know this for so long. This is why I didn't like it. I didn't like it for that reason. I, I thought the batteries were crap and everything else. It, there was nothing wrong with it. It was just I wasn't aware of how you have to charge it. So a printer came. Sort this out. This printer's rubbish. Okay, this printer's the same printer you've been doing for 15 years. Get or Do a testo printer where you press a button and it prints. Not this... For... 10 minute do a proper printer okay there were i carried a worcester um heat exchanger brush because for me that's better than one of them round brushes with the thing i prefer this i use this on everything it's good for cleaning burners and whatnot a gorilla mount for uh filming oh there we go there's my normal Here's my normal connection piece for a Testo for this, for this annoying thing. Okay, that's the normal connection I would use because that air press switch hose just makes a much better connection. And I would usually use the blue one because it's just, uh, oh, the only reason I use the blue one, it's much easier to see against the background of this um, tool roll. It's easier to just grab it and find it. Anyway, like I say, these are improved because they give you the white hose now. But if that, oh, there, there's the blue one. There you go. That's what I usually use. So let me get all that together. And then just a normal probe, normal, normal analyzer thing. And look, I don't even use the NTC bit on there because it broke off a long time ago. So that's that. And that's kind of it. That's, that's what I bring on a scooter. Um, I obviously carry much more in the van. Uh, and I still didn't find my little inject cleaning kit, so I have to now order one of them. I have to sort out a new uh, a new tool bag. This was perfect for my scooter top box. This bag and this tool roll fit exactly across the top of the top box, so I could pile G10 seals and bits and bobs on the bottom, uh, including like this. Yeah, when this is you know, done up, I could have all that on the bottom taken up. You know about three or four inches and then I could plop this and my tool roll on top and the lid would close down and everything was hidden away. This was perfect size. So I need to get something the same as this that's a bit more robust because this is all just falling apart. Um, it's a shame, but I'll, uh, if anyone can recommend something where I can get uh, like a case of a dimension that suits me, because I want this exact dimension, that'd be really, really helpful. So I'll get this video uploaded and that should show everyone you don't need a crazy amount of tools to fix boilers. You really don't. I mean, I mean, analyzing stuff are expensive. A multimeter can be expensive. Um, but with tools, you have to buy the best you can afford. It really, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some gimmicky stuff like uh, they used to do a crocodile. Someone still makes it now. I can't remember what it's called, but it was a pair of grips, right? You'd open them out, and as you squeeze them down, the uh, I think it was called Robo Grip. It would adjust down to the size nut you wanted. Well, I bought them, and they rounded every nut I ever tried to use them on, so they got binned. I mean, don't buy gimmicky stuff. Buy 
you know, true and trusted and uh, like you can't go wrong with Nipex, you can't go wrong with Kane. I don't think you can go wrong with Kane. Other people, I've got someone who's a mate of mine who completely disagrees. Um, uh, you can't really go wrong with back. You can't go wrong with backhoe grips. Oh, sorry, backhoe adjustable spanners. It's as simple as that. You cannot go wrong with it. They are the spanner. Um, I wish someone else would come out and compete with them and make a spanner where the jaw doesn't end up slack as anything after six months. So I bought the in my installation toolbox. I have that spanner that goes it's hugely wide but really short handle. I bought that thinking that seemed quite, it seemed well made, it was really nice to, to, to use when it was um, when it was in the shop, but it, it, it uh, it's now all floppy and horrible. And I bought the Monument ones that are about this size, slightly slimmer, that go wide as well, is it, I think it was Monument, uh, and, but they got up to a really sharp point here, um, but they seem to flex, when you're tightening something down, the jaws flex apart ever so slightly. I mean, backhoes don't do that. There's, look, you can hear, there is a tiny bit of play in that jaw, but this is a well-used spanner. This must be 15 years old. I mean, I mean, you expect a little bit of wear. This is nothing. This thing's gonna last, this thing will probably outlast me. If And if someone was to actually look after it, it'd probably outlast them after me as well. So anyway, that's it. So what can I say? Um, thank you very much for uh, watching this video that's probably gonna be incredibly long. Um, and hopefully, if there's some tools here you think, actually, yeah, this is quite right. Um, this, If there's some tools here you think, yeah, I could do with that, please look in the description below. Uh, I will find the, the best price I can on the Amazon and it will cost you nothing extra to click the link and purchase it through the app. It will cost you nothing more, but it just means I get a tiny, tiny kickback, which, hey, every little helps, as Tesco say. So thanks a lot, guys, and um, I'm sorry it took so long to do, and hopefully it's worked because I had my GoPro on looping, so that might have you know, ruined everything. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and one last thing I will say, if you have this, you can then buy leak detection fluid in big bottles and uh, save your fortune if you buy in big bottles. So, thanks a lot.